but let's continue. Hold on. Hmm? What the hell is so spicy? Why are they spicy? I mean, they're jalapeno cherry bites. You might got one with extra jalapeno. But, um, what was it? What was it? Anyways, since it's pollen season and we're going to have to spend some time de-stressing, mm -hmm. we'll de-stress with dice and then we'll go out on expedition so we can help find find a cure for this the pollen thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Are you okay? No. Jalapenos! So th is this really the first time that you actually had the jalapeno in the jalapeno cheddar bite? Yeah! It's fucking spicy! Okay, I cannot believe that. Every time I got this, I never got a jalapeno one. Wait. I mean, they were there, but it's not like a super concentrated one. Did I just fuck up? I thought I pressed to the hangout with dies on the lookout for scouts <sighs> might as well because we got perception we might get more perception really uh you heard chief security chief Rhett was on the lookout for scouts for the lookout for lookouts that is kids chill out on top of the walls all afternoon and count xenos oh so so I did click it but he's trying to give us an a job to do while we're up there. Mm. Sounds way better than going to class. He gives you a once over, eyes narrowed. All right, he says, look over there at the end of the field. What does that sign say? Read out loud. The sign, you read the sign easily. It says, if you can read this, your eyesight is 2020. So you're telling me if I sit down, look at that yeah. sign, I'll be, be like, your vision ain't 2020, son of a bitch. Okay, should we get rid of our stress? Our stress uh, demodifier, or should we just leave it? Leave it in general, because yeah. it says minus one stress, hello? Okay, so yeah, we have we now have a chance to have a job up there. Hmm. Mid-pollen, we're gonna go save our dad. First off, did we ever give a, a gift to Dice? I mean, it is a new month. Yeah. Where's that raggedy behind kid? Well, speak to Peepaws first because it, Peepaws wanted to say something. No, it's just like to see him sneeze again. <sighs> see, there you go. He sneezes. No, he wants us to help with the animals. If we oh, do that, we'll you be. You get a four card. You need better cards anyway. You have but here's so many the thing. zeros. But here's the thing: if we do that, we're going to basically use up another month in pollen. We can do that anytime. So, like, we need to head out, basically. There you are. Can we give you a gift? There you go into the rest restricted area, but brave your eat. Give you another route. Actually, I'm surprised you're not playing that teddy bear game. I guess it made you rage quit for temporarily. Mm, I didn't think about playing. Uh, survey the planes. Seven events, five collectibles, and a boss <coughs> event. Are you okay? I died. So, let's go do that. That is the call of my people. I don't, I don't know you. I never knew you. <laughs> you know, you see my shenanigans every single day, bro. Yes, I see your shenanigans every day, but there is just some shenanigans you just can't forgive. What do you mean? <laughs> the call of your people noise? Yes. What are you talking about? That means you, 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 you forsaken Ugandan uncles. If you choke on them gushers. I usually turn them into a ball. Not going to think about that. No, like you squish them all into No, a ball. I know. 
So we gotta get through this whole area and get all the encounters done. Alright. But is that actually helping Dad? Like, that's the thing I don't know. He sought watch a herd of shaggy purple furred animals slowly meander down a slope. You've never seen them before. Let's study them because that will help with our intelligence. It's actually giving us brain. Five kudos if we can get this to equal, which is fine. Tell me when you lose. You know what? <laughs> I'm so tired of you. I like hanging out with you, but I'd be tired of you too. One, two, three, which will give us 13. Plus two if in the first or last. Okay. Three, two, which gave you a three, and turn you into a two. Are you really playing a game while I'm playing a game? Hell yeah, bro! <laughs> <laughs> oh. It is more content. Four. You hear me scream randomly and you'd be wondering what the hell is going on. Yeah. <sighs> Minus one stress, so we only got one stress out of this. That's good. The Wait, creatures... that's, a bad, that's bad or good? No, we only got one stress. Okay, that's like, good. Like, seriously, we are at stress zero. We're just going to get one stress out of that. The creature's fur is like grass, so they must be some kind of photosense, an animal that gets part of their energy from the sun. They couldn't be aborescent photosense, bush bubs, because they've got branches growing out of their heads and backs. You check the, your survey journal. It says bush bubs are common here, but they're smaller. Solitary creatures, so no. And they're too small to be balenal but photosynth. Balenal what now? B-A-L-N-E-A-L. Who usually don't leave the water. And we so we found a new species. Okay, that's cool. Maybe. That would be cool. You decide to name them just in case. You look at them through your holoc... <laughs> still, holoculars. Oh, wow. At maximum zoom. You can kind of make out that they have a super long jaws and a huge underbite. Sunbaskers, underbiters, or herding sunbiters. Is that English? Is what we could name them. Or we could name them something else. Describe them again? How they usually... How they describe it? That it looks like they got grass growing off of their bags. They have horns and apparently a very bad underbite. Where so there are a like type of huh? Why does that just sound like ombu? <laughs> <laughs> We're not naming them ombus. <laughs> um, I guess. Wait, and they said they they like they're clump up together. Yes. So what do you, um, I was gonna say sunbaskers are hurting sunbiters. Hurting sunbiters, I guess. Okay. Because they're all clumped up together, as you're saying. Naming things is hard, so hurting sunbiters will have to do. You log your discovery, and we got kudos. Okay. So, okay. Oh, and we found dice. Okay, what does he say? We're about to ask. Hey, Solana. Dice greets you cautiously as you pass on a narrow path. Hey, do you want to, um, want me to show you something? Yeah. Dice almost never makes overtures of friendship. Whatever it is must be pretty cool. Yes, you always find the coolest stuff. Yes! You follow him for nearly half an hour. A couple of times he stops to listen for something, then continues onward, tromping through the fields of broad top mush trees and swaying antlered ferns. After a while, you start to wonder if he's just lost. You're about to say something when he holds his hand up for silence and directs you to crawl under a huge mushroom. On the other side, you have a view down to one of the perfectly round ponds. To take up most of it is an enormous xeno, its legs deep underwater. Mm. It's a balneal, he says. They live in the swamp. You don't usually see them here. This one seems totally at home. It dips its long neck and even longer mouth into the pond, sucking up water from the bottom and spewing it out of a spout on the back of his head. It sprays a beautiful turquoise water sparkles in the sun. 
tiny colorful bird-like creatures dart around catching the tiny fish that comes spraying out. We should kill it while it's distracted. No, let's sit and watch this. What the heck? Why do you want to murder so much? And we got two fresh old dice just by sitting and watching. Why, why, why you, why y'all gotta, gotta be butts like that, man? Trying to, like, trying to kill everything all the time. I'll admit, that is kind of stupid when your first thought is, Hey, let's kill it! One of your jobs as a surveyor is to document the flora and fauna through photographs. You spot a small animal in the crook of a tree. It's so perfectly camouflaged, you can only really see it when it breathes. You've got a camera belt into your hollow palm, but it's not equipped to catch your difficult shots like this. You'll need to put in the work. Hmm. Find a good angle or try to get close. So this one is perception, which our perception is at 37. And animal is that handling, naturally which is 37? 25. No. Oh yeah, this is naturally. Oh wow. Our persuasion has the boost. So we can do an animal's challenge and probably get more animal handling, or we could get higher perception. Honestly, if we get higher perception... Because there's, be, there's things that be costing 40. Yeah. So bravery is at 37, and perception is at 37. Animals is at 25. So getting perception is a good idea right now. Yeah, because there's things that cost yeah, 40. One slot will turn cards physical. Okay, you're gonna sit there. You'll sit there and you'll sit there. Yeah. Uh, you'll sit there. Give me a little bit more. Five, four. Oh, 20. So I need 16 more. Sets neighbors to this value. Plus two to the last card, so that'll be all right. Three, two. Ooh, I got a super goal. Plus one perception and plus one kudos. Climb up a tree and get an angle from above, not disturbing your subject. It comes out great. Very avant-garde. Utopia is glad for the shot. Okay. I didn't even try to dig up those roots. But I'm on the other side of that, so that's good. It's a cloudy day and you hear the crash of thunder from somewhere nearby. Loud. Sounds like it's getting closer. Suddenly, a massive, impossibly tall something punctures the low clouds and slams into the ground ahead of you. It's as tall as a, sky, as a skyscraper and a meter, meter wide, covered with a chitinous bone like an insect. I can't say skyscraper or meter, but I can say chitinous. Do you feel proud? That I know science words and not word words. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you think it might be a lag? Another crashes down, then another. The creature's body must be up in the clouds. So high you can't see anything but legs. Ah! Oh. Perception 50 or greater, we would have got a card. Mm. To stand still and to run. Yeah, freeze in terror, closing your eyes and standing perfectly still, it just passed by. You sense a shadow descending above you, something hits you from the left and you're flung sideways off your feet. A moment later, one of the massive legs slams right down where you had been, another second you would have been flat as the grass underneath it. And the mysterious stranger helped. You looked up at what hit you or they, it's already gone, having saved your life. So we got a new card, regardless which was at a five. Uh, series of small circular pools chained together for an impassable body of water. You don't see an obvious route through the path. 
though the path does continue off in the distance on the other side and let's look for a place to cross and it's a perception challenge Professor Hal and his demise. Yes. Minus two to neighboring cards. Right. Had it right at some point. It just sucks that you do that. Uh, I'm going to have to push through that one because I was off by four. And no combination could work. No, because this one gives minus two to any neighboring uh, social cards. This one turns all cards to the right of it to a plus one. So you just had a bad rule. Yeah. Or I could probably do this. I got it up to 17. And I'll just push through and that one gives me 10 extra stress, which sucks. Leap to an air place where two pools meet that you think you can leap over. These little ponds look too small to house anything really dangerous. You hope you approach the water's edge. Leap of faith, which gives me a plus one in bravery. So I'm at 38. And make it over the narrow gap and you feel empowered. Uh, stress. Yeah, this is the way I was going, right? You hear Dice shouting from a nearby to come quick and look at this. You meet up with Dice on a curiously clean part of the path. No twigs, pebbles, bits of grass, or the ubiquitous dorps moth scales that litter this area. It's almost like it's been swept clean. And there in the middle of the perfect circle, three meters wide, is what you can see, is what you can only describe as a shrine. Uh, a hollow waste-like structure made of twigs and packed spark snow forms the centerpiece around it and deliberately space piles of colorful fruit, flowers, and glittering stones like an offering. It's a perception challenge, so we can stick it out and wait.
work, but if I do it this way, there it goes. No stas. Hang out for hours and don't discover anything except how boring this idea was. Dice wait takes a nap. You're almost falling asleep when something shuffles into the clearing. It is a bush bub. It crawls slowly along down the path and stops to pick up a pop flower. It stops to pick up a stone. When it arrives at the shrine, it carefully places the flower in the pile of flowers and the stone in the pile of stones. Then it picks up the stone and just repositions it. Just so. You wonder Did you if- you slap a beast? Huh? Are you just literally watching a beast or slapping it? Mm -hmm. You wonder if this creature is somehow religious or is it trying to attract a mate with this little show of decor? There's so much you don't know about the animals that live here. Let's explore some more. Mm, can we explore more? I know I should go home soon, but I want to see, I want to see where, what else is here. Okay, just that medical route so we can go home. Come on, Peterson. Go home. Three perception and one animal. So our perception is at 44. Our bravery is at 38. Uh. <laughs> no, just listen. You're getting older. It's that magical time in your life full of discoveries and possibilities when children become adults and their bodies change in weird, wonderful, and often embarrassing ways. When you were younger, congruence gave you a class, a frank presentation about preparing for the changes of your bodies with experience in the next few days. Which parts of the presentation was relevant to you? Ministrating in breast growth? Voice changing and getting erections? What? Or none of it? I am like a doll down there. I guess menstruating and breast breath go. Okay. <laughs> what is going on? They're getting the talk. You and your friends giggled your way through Congruence's presentation and left with a new appreciation for the wonders of the human body. Puberty had the felt like something that human body. that would happen so far in the future that it didn't apply to you. You put it out of your mind, even as you notice Cal's voice beginning to drop or Mars starting to dress differently. Yeah. We're about so to get... I to look prettier. So we're about to see a change in them. Until one morning, you wake up and something feels different. You just know something's off. And as soon as you open your eyes, there's a... Uh, things are a uh, squelchier than you expect them to be down there. <laughs> I'm bleeding! <laughs> You, I'm dying, mother! You just want to close your eyes again. You remember Congruence's sexual education classes, and you really, really are not ready for the real-world practical applications. If you just go back to sleep, it'll go away, right? You finally sigh and muster up the courage to look under the blankets. Yep, your period started. Discreetly ask mom for help or deal with it on your own. <laughs> you pull back your privacy curtain and gesture for your mom to come over when she sees the problem her eyes go wide and she gives you a big hug what my little kid is growing <laughs> up she exclaims <laughs> embarrassing. you feel your face grow hot with embarrassment your dad is right there she puts her hands on your shoulders. I'm so happy for you, kiddo. I know you're probably grossed out, but getting your period is important. Sometimes we need a bit of mess in our lives to remind us that we're real, that we're a part of this Touché. world. Touché. It reminds us that we have the ability to make life and responsibility to take care of that life. Getting your period is a beautiful thing. You cannot think of anything worse. <laughs> Thankfully soon you can get a blocker to keep from having to go through this every month. Wait, what? Cool. Your mom hugs you again and keeps talking about how she's proud of you. It's super embarrassing and you can't help but shove her away and retreat into your bunk to stew about it. Mm. I'm pressing. So we might have to go and talk to our friends. Uh, Peepaws! 
what is happening? Do you feel on edge today? Like everything that happens feels so unfair and tragic. Like you want to punch stuff and then cry about it. Like you want to be left alone. <laughs> I'm pregnant. This is the emotion of pregnancy. But you desperately want attention. You feel like a fount of new energy is starting to bubble up inside you. Dangerous, uncontrollable energy. Welcome to puberty, Solana. <laughs> oh no. Oh, this is gonna get good. Oh What's this? Oh, we're rebellious. Rebellious increases are tripled. Oh no. <laughs> we are about to cause chaos. This means it is time for the tuning wheel phase. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bravery for your greater. Too soon to give a gift. What is that? What was that question mark? We we already did this for today. Yep, too soon. Oh. Dice is skipping stones across a flat stretch of rock. Talk to my sister today. He says, skip, 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 skip. She's doing some kind of super secret extra credit project at engineering. She wanted to gloat, I guess. He tosses a rock into the air and catches it. Whatever. She likes it when people pay attention to her. <laughs> Alright, Tammy. She oh, was present. daydreaming. We don't got no present for Tammy? Nope. Oh. Shut up. Cal is digging up something in the garden. We don't got no food for that boy? Huh? We don't got no food for that boy? No, but we can do the nature fact thing. Sure. Want to hear nature fact? You, s you recently overheard the children learning how to count by studying hop eyes. Wait, before you continue reading that, there's gotta be a run. That we should steal Cal from Tammy just to see what happened. You, so you want to do a run? Like when we do the second life, we gotta steal Cal from Tammy? Yeah, I want to see what happens. Oh, you finna get mean. Not, no, not no, mean. I know, I know. But, or we steal Tammy from Cal. <laughs> Do you want to father a hundred children? Or would you rather just have children that have no sweat glands? Evelyn? What? Wait, what? What's Right, he has, he has no he has cold a, or heat resistance. Yeah, he has cold and heat resistance, so he doesn't really sweat. So he always smells good. Yeah, maybe he's more safe than he's here. <laughs> the most terrifying being in existence, Tammy. Okay. A sweet, lovable child. Okay. Demonic demon who wants multiple children. Hop eyes have one foot and two tail forks and three stomachs and four eyes. And if you see five of them together, that's uh, lucky, Cal laughs, finishing the mnemonic with you. Wait, how do they find out that hop eyes have three stomachs? I don't want to know. You got one more in biology and plus two friendship with Cal. I swear. <laughs> you know very well this is going to happen all the time. Oh, yes. Uh, well, either way, we're going to need to take a break soon because... The stress. Yes, the stress. The stress. Right, did we ever... Well, do we know what type of thing she likes? Oh. Bugs, bugs, remember, remember? Oh yeah, that uh, that tangent. No, that dice said that tangent likes bugs. Okay. Yeah. All right, so should tangent we do? Likes, no, um, um, Curly Fries told us that she likes worms. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna relax in the lounge instead of sitting up there with dice. Okay. We haven't been friends with Tammy for a bit. Mm -hmm. You're relaxing. After hours, when Auntie Sedent pops her head into the lounge. The kitchen, she announces in an artificially sweet voice. Oh, Lord. Artificial? You know, the kitchen. <laughs> you know, like that voluntold voice. It's like, you, 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 you should come and help me. Yep. It's I'm... looking for someone to help with part-time cooking duties. Someone young. Someone responsible. Someone organized. <laughs> Someone, she stares pointedly at the teens in the room, who might have too much free time on their hands. Let's that sound like somebody somebody else who did that same type of similar quote. I don't know, but we got 22 organizing, so we can volunteer. 
so we can do cooking now. She bustles over to you. You'll be perfect, Solana, she says, hugging you. Then loudly to the others in the room, she declares, I'm glad somebody around here is responsible enough to put their put in their share of work. Um, I would like to run, please. Can I run? Everyone else ignores her, shuffling awkwardly. No one wants to dis- disappoint their auntie. Auntie Seedent gestures towards the nearby cafeteria and tells you to come by next week so she can show you the ropes. Wait, this is a new unlock, I'm guessing? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I can get rid of discovering since it's just a one and it doesn't have any any other things to it. Okay. We can finally get, let, leave the poo-poo cards. Yeah. All right. No more poo-poo cards. Okay, so now it's early dust. Let's look around and make sure nobody needs to talk to us. Wait, where the hell Tammy? There's dice. Oh, I didn't even notice that there was something there. Uh, oh, that's right. It's a, it's a new month, so we can give something to dice. Dice, you want another, another medicinal root? I don't know what you've been doing with them, but... But whatever's. Okay, nobody wants to talk. What should we do today? Um. Should we get some bravery? Well, th- th- technically, our brain is stupid. Our brain has always been stupid. Our brain's been stupid since we came out of the womb. Okay, we we need more stupid. We need we need more brain. Okay, <laughs> we'll go get more brains. <coughs> what subject should we do? Mm. Life sciences. Life. Sciences, not sciences. I have been, I haven't watched Disenchantment in months. Why am I saying sciences? Ugh. Study engineering or humanities. What is each thing does again? Okay, let's see. Two biology, one reasoning, and what was the thing that we needed more creative? We, we, we creativity on, or do we already pass the threshold? We're only at seventeen for creativity. Jesus Christ. Okay, do the one that's creativity then. Uh, engineering these. Okay, creativity, so humanities. What? Reasoning 30 or greater, we would have been able to do something. Yeah. Wait, there was another job. <laughs> you see a notes on the engineering hollow web. Professor Howe is looking for someone to help with after school tutoring. Now I'm going to focus on my own studies because even I know that we ain't that smart. <laughs> Must you insult our brain? We know. Our brains are shit. Must you insult the brain? Yes. <sighs> Three creativity. So we should be within that threshold into persuasion which is helping and we are in a hormonal stage what are you saying something else than we should be no talking about the teenage hormones is going to make us rebellious it's virtual malia time for speeches and games we already know try to sneak some food before the speeches start but chief engineer instance catches you and smacks your hand away <laughs> Your mom gets really mad at her, and it causes a huge yelling match. Your dad directs you away from the table as Instance blames your mom for the way things are right now. Whatever that means. Yeah, I'm I'm a teenager now. I have uh, stupid ideas that make no sense, and I will do them. Your dad passes you a soy sweet to keep your tummy busy during the speeches. He's the best. Uticot <laughs> takes stage and manages to calm everyone down. Welcome to our fourth Virtue Malia celebration, she says, speaking through a maxophoner. What? A maxophoner? A you mean a megaphone? Like Her voice has been getting just... weaker lately, and she can't reach across the... Sc- oh. oh! She's getting old. I'm proud, as always, to stand before you as your governor and celebrate another year of peace and prosperity on this beautiful planet. Yudhika steps aside, wobbling a little as she walks, leaving Seek to complete the annual formalities. Oh! Your mom sets for it. This year's feast includes a new glow-in-the-dark food. Pixie beans are our first domesticated virtue crop. 
the crowd applause and your mom raises her hands. Credits go to Germanium. He insisted we dedicate a third of our fields to them. So you'll have to thank him for the light showing your toilets tonight. <laughs> a smattering of applause ripples through your through the crowd and your dad chuckles nervously. Your mom's smile fades. As you know, we lost our hydroponics and microbial soil during the wormhole incident. She says, these pixie beans will make up for the losses we face for our earth crops. Utica's weedy voice rattles through the maxophoner. Thank you, everyone. Let's get on with the games. We are not smart enough for science fair, but we can still do talent show and bot quadrathon. Okay, so talent show. Talent show. Dice and Mars are competitors again. Dice is first, and he stomps on stage with a silly top hat and a cape waving a magic wand. He introduces himself as Dice, the destroyer of reality, and tells everyone to step back because he's going to pull a Hawkeye from his hat. He takes off his hat, and a very surprised Hawkeye falls out and boings away into the crowd. Predictably, this upsets Dice, and he flees the stage in embarrassment. Uh -huh. Mars takes the stage, launches into a incredible lip sync performance complete with the holographic fireworks at the end, passing you as you go to take your place on stage. She sticks her nose in the air and wishes you luck following that. All right. Now, we can't do uh, playing a photophoner. What? Play the photophoner because we didn't go buy one. Uh, we can do a juggle act or do a better lip sync. Oh, you! I you know very well. Oh, Stay upstage, the bitch. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna stress that shit out. Oh, we are gonna stress the hell out, us. Uh, do do do. Okay, so you'll be here plus to the to the neighboring. Oh no. Uh, okay, so that, that jumps you to 15. What about this? Okay, it jumps it to 17, and since we use this, because everything to the right of it would have been a plus one, we jump that to 17, which is great. Uh, we're not going to use that. So three... Okay. So next route. Okay. But like I said, stress the hell out. Okay, that. so this is going to be a plus three during social challenges, which this is. So it's a plus two bonus to pairs. So four, two, 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 two. Okay, we can push through what only 15 stress because it did a plus two to pairs and this okay. helped. So yeah, we're gonna have to push through because we were only off by three. Anything to upstage Mars. <laughs> Mars isn't the only one who can rely on cheap tricks like hyro pyrotechnics to win a crowd. Your performance not only includes fireworks and light effects, but also six holograms of yourself doing a synchronized dance. <laughs> oh my god! You win by audience applause. Oh, she gonna be mad. But she, but she's got some friendship added. She shakes her, she shakes her hands and thanks you for actually giving her a challenge this year. Time for the feast. The pixie beans are a hit. Your parents keep touting their many benefits. They grow well here. They're super nutritious. They taste great. They're very versatile. And kids love their bright multicolor glow. And their beans, the musical fruit. Your rumbling stomach has made you grouchy. Your parents won't let you eat until they finally stop bragging about their dumb beans. You can set the options. Pixie bean soup, pixie bean salad, pixie bean chili, and even pixie bean aquafaba dessert. Everything that? glows in the evening twilight. The fuck is that? I don't know. You're going to be seeing glow bugs on your ass. <laughs> you suddenly shove your pixie bean everything around on your plate. You don't even want to eat them anymore, stupid beans. Stupid feast. Stupid games. Stupid everyone. Oh my god. Every you time. Fun. 
every time someone turns to talk to you, especially about how great these beans are and how great your parents are growing for growing them, you just become irritated. They're just beans. It's like they love these beans more than they love you. You're probably just hungry. Screw these stupid beans or eat your beans. <laughs> uh, eat your beans. Eat your beans, feel better. You want to rebel against these stupid beans, but the truth is, you're too hungry to resist. You count backwards from 10 to calm yourself down so you don't blow up at your mom. Why is she smiling all the time? You settle on glowering at her over your plate of glowing beans. She notices and just purses her lips and turns away from you to talk to someone else. Rude. You shovel food into your mouth, trying not to look like you're enjoying it. It, okay, it is as delicious as everyone said. You start to feel more human. The more you eat, right? Yeah, food. Food is great. <laughs> what is it? What is all the mood swing? You do feel better after you eat something. Everyone's in high spirits after dinner, breaking off into little groups to talk or make music together as the sky darkens for the shortest night of the year. You feel your mood improve by the minute as your friends pull you into a fun rhythmic clapping game. As your irritation fades, you wonder if this is what congruence meant when she warned you about hormones will make you feel out of control sometimes. When you go back to your quarters, getting ready for bed, your dad gives you a big hug is exactly what you needed. I am 13, I am hormonal. <laughs> Auntie Sia tried to talk to me about puberty today. She says, rolling her eyes. It was a pleasure to tell her that I may seem to be suffering from ill effects from the malady. Or the malady. She crosses her arms and shrugs. Perhaps there's a limit to genetic recombination therapy, as I do not seem to be undergoing the effects of common among those who are born to this array of hormones. I'm sure by his chief engineer instance. Okay, so yeah, we're we're dumb as hell, but I want to help dad with the animals. Is that okay? Yeah. Don't forget to take care of yourself. I know. Let me help with the animals. Your dad is working with the float cows. One of them is sick and isn't producing enough urine as a ballast. And it keeps wanting to float away. Your dad is building a spike so he can tie her down until she feels better. You hold onto the leash feeling like a little kid with a balloon, a big, woolly, gassy balloon, it looks down at you with placid, unblinking eyes. You can see yourself refracted in them. Weird. Neat. So that's it. And so I can't help him with the animals again. Let's see. I need two more bravery to do the next thing with dice. Uh, um, let's see, we need Persuasion 80 for this one. Yeah, we remember when we were like, oh my god, what do you need? 80. <sighs> we were like, hell no, brother. Our empathy is at 42, so we can't do a random act of kindness with you yet. Well, they're the 84 too, so I'm like, get, get creativity up. Yes, yes. I'm looking at everybody to make sure. Uh, nature fact, we need biology of 40 or greater. We're only at 22 with that, so we're going to still be dumb as hell. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Restricted area, we need bravery of 40, so we're off. We're only off by two, so we might have to go play with anemone for a little bit if we want to handle with dice. She makes a great lunch. Munching a container of cut up pieces of dust melon. My mom's kind of bossy, but she sure makes a great lunch. Gotta keep your strength up. So uh, combat? Yeah. Just because we needed the bravery. Combat animals. Perception animals. Uh, sports fall then. 
Uh, you're playing sports ball with Cal, Anemone, Nougat, and a few other kids. Anemone's team is absolutely destroying yours because Cal keeps letting in goals. You chalk it up to lack of skill, but you've seen Cal in drills. He's a really good goalie. And it's just him versus himself. That's why you picked him. <laughs> but Nougat's playing. That's probably why. Anemone likes winning at first, but after a few innings, she gets frustrated and stops over to Cal. It's no fun if you're not trying, she shouts, waving her hands. What's wrong with you? Cal shrugs and Anemone puffs up her cheeks. Are you going easy on me because we're friends? That's not fair. you got to do your best. Hello, there's a child here. Have you forgotten English? But I'd rather have fun than win, Cal says, shoving his hands in his pocket. I don't mind when other people win. I like it when my friends are happy. I'm not happy. Anemone stomps. I'm mad, and I can show off how good I am if you're just letting me win. They keep fighting. And everyone on both teams looks at them awkwardly, wondering if you should keep playing. Bored with the state of this game, Nougat grabs the ball and starts bouncing it on her head. Ant eater, she giggles. Bush bub, camel, dorps moth. She says a new animal every time she bounces it. Oh, it's her. She's doing the ABCs. You know what? I'm hanging out with Nougat. I'm done with you. And I got friendship with Nemne and Cal from doing that. Nougat's right. Why argue about the game when you can just make up another one that people are happy about? You alternate letters with Nougat until eventually everyone is playing except for Cal and Nemne. They look over and see everyone having fun without them. They look embarrassed as they jog over to join the new game. That was easy. <sighs> Bravery, toughness, stress. Stress. Hey everyone, I am a moody ass teenager. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I dare you to go into this restricted area. You dare dice to explore the creepiest, darkest part of the engineering. Deep down where even Chief Engineer Instance never goes. Under the recycling room where they're saved, there are ghosts. You set the mood and sneak around behind him. Put your hollow palm right underneath your face and shout, Boo! He rolls his eyes. Solana, think about it. If there were ghosts on this, on this spaceship, one of them would be my mom. <laughs> oh yeah, you guessed that was scary normal person, but Dice still isn't scared of anything. Plus one bravery and plus two friendship with him. Well, at the very least. Okay, so what shall we do? Uh, well, the thing is, is the creativity is still an issue. Okay, so we'll go and try to get more creative. Yes, we need better brain. Uh, Especially that's our technically our expertise and we're doing nothing about it. Nah, empathy is our expertise. No. No, well. Because remember, we are empath, empathic. Because mm. I'm saying our expertise is in that direction, but we can nothing. Because we are not, we are not very smart. Professor Hal hands you a stack of paper and a box of pencils to ask you to pass them out to the class. Today in humanities class, we are practicing our handwriting. No. Yes, you will. Nah. We're going to teach you cursive. Hell no. Nah. Yes, we will. Hell nah. Yes, we will. Nah. You're going to learn to read and write it. Goddamn chicken scratch. The way you do it will be goddamn chicken scratch. No, and you're going to practice it. Hell no. You hear a tangent groan beside you. But Professor how? She rhymes. Why will we ever need to write by hand when we have hollow palms? This exercise will be part of a history lesson, part future skill. Hal tells the class, we may not always have our hollow palm technology here in our little colony. Our replicators and computers will break down eventually, and when they do, we'll have to rely on low-tech solutions for everyday tasks. So first lesson, how to correctly hold a pencil. And they're learning this at 13. Ah! Oh my god, really? 
You and the other students get to work learning how they'll print by hand. It's a little like holding a stylus, but the texture is all wrong. Your letters are small and cramped. You have trouble keeping them in a straight line. Tang, though, is suffering the worst. That's good. Ha! Mars laughs. Look like we finally found something Tang isn't good at. She keeps mixing up her lowercase a's and e's. Tang is used to using a stylus for her hollow palm, but she's never actually drawn the letters. She fumbles like a child, bashing her fist against hollow palm for the first time. It's painful to watch. You can tell she's getting more frustrated with each letter. Mars, on the other hand, has lovely penmanship. She can even write in cursive. You do worse than Mars. What are you talking about? This is Mars we're talking about here. My papa taught me when I was little, she says, showing off her paper. Cultured people know how to write for real. I mean, y'all doing your whack whack patty whack, give a dog a bone, writing? Is that how I'm... Is that a bone? I'll help you, Tan. I don't need your help, she sneers. She hates being bad at something, but being patronized is even worse. Just let me do it myself, she grumbles, falling up her fifth piece of paper and tossing it on the floor. You know what? I don't care that I lost two friendship with you. You need help. Perfectionism is a virus. Mars laughs, but after a few minutes of tense silence, she looks over to Tang's work. You're pressing too hard, she tells her softly. Loosen your grip. It's different from typing in the air with a stylus. Try moving your shoulder instead of your wrist and fingers. Tang takes a deep breath and tries again, slow and deliberate. Mars nods and slides closer, putting her hand over Tang's and guiding her pencil on the paper. See, you're getting it, she murmurs. Tang's cheeks go pink. I mean, I had a feeling. Like I said, if the, if the two of them are together, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the apocalypse. After a minute, Tang eases her tension and her writing starts to flow more naturally. Uh, thanks, she stammers, pushing her chair away from Mars. Those two are going to end up together. That's debatable. We got some more smarts. Now we're in the wet season. Mm. All right, dice, you idiot. Let me find. Oh, we found bobber fruit. So we. So Cal, stuff this in your face. There you go. Yeah, you're always starving. Anemone, Tammy. We haven't hung out in, with Tammy for a while. Yeah. Where's Dice? Is Dice standing outside? Yep. Yeah, he always stands outside. Not really. Uh, I'm now adapted a degenerate. She told me she's just trying to help. Like, everything would be fine if I just acted like everyone else. What, medicinal roots feel make you feel better? I don't know what you've been doing with them, but... Probably playing with them, experimenting. Should we go out and explore with him again? That's wet season? Yeah. Yeah. Explore nearby, survey the plains because I'm gonna go elsewhere, man. Are there any other things I need to find? Wait, did I ever check over here? Found a glittering cluster. There's medicinal roots. Oh, so you got something for Mars? Yes. Oh my gosh, she's not useless. Did you just call me useless? I mean, your seeking abilities have were sad. As much as you love going outside. Yes, I love to go outside. Peterson, where are you? There you are. If you die, I will be very, very sad. I 
think we're in a pickle here, feet. Your crows just sit there and laugh, huh? <laughs> Oh, so I was missing a thing. Okay. Not much to find. The piece is peaceful, particularly beautiful plateau, spread out like a picnic. He's eager to find some adventure. You know what? Let's catch up with a boy. There's no adventure where dice is either. This is some peaceful territory right here. Boring. Medicinal roots. Peterson? Okay. I want to at least know where my boy is. Okay. Hey, at least I'm trying to be good and be a, a good pa a good parent. Good parent, good pet owner. Well, yeah, I'm a parent. It's basically a parent. I mean, yeah. Dog but honestly, because he sounds way too cute to be left alone. I really want to know the conversation that this character had to have with her, with their parents, to keep Squidly. Okay, should we do a job? Should we work? Well, because mm. we can work in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We can work babysitting. What Wait, Tammy? Kitchen? We never did the kitchen yet, right? Mm -mm. So I guess we can try the kitchen. Okay, I think it would still be in the same house as the school, right? No. Nope. Mm. That'd be too tall. Probably in the lounge area. Uh, yep, help in the kitchens. Creativity and empathy, and we get friendship with Tammy. Okay. Back in space, cooking involved programming ration machines and putting dishes in the lasermatic dishwasher because water was too precious to clean dishes with. But now, we are growing real food and trying to figure out how to cook it. The cafeteria kitchens are bright and full of good smells. There's always something baking, or broiling, or frying. You take a deep breath and just what hold if all of the. Learning a cooking skill because of that. Mm -hmm. Chief Steward Ann, known to the kids as Auntie Seda, is in charge of everything in the living quarters, running the children's creech, coordinating the cleaning bots, and of course, cooking for the whole colony. It's a lot of work, but she's good at delegating all of the kids she's raised here, including you. She's a big believer in learning by trying, and doesn't mind if you if a few dinners are destroyed in the process. Tammy waves cheerfully at you, and Auntie Cedar welcomes you with a warm smile. Oh, look at you two. I just know you're going to be a huge help here. She shows you to the kitchen nanoprinters. Just press this I can button. See, I can see Tammy being like the, the I mean the successor to Aunt Cedar. This button and the ration machine will spit out a freshly pressed cake of soy rations. It's not tasty, but it's nutritious. Then she shows you how shows you the range a large pot of brown stew that's bubbling away this here is where the real magic happens she says proudly uh tammy claps her hands excitedly auntie will we get to decorate cookies she asks sometimes me and my dad used to decorate cookies together and it's really really fun and i think everyone would be really would really like it we could do stained glass cookies with barber fruit jelly you know what hell yeah let's make some cookies you just hear the excitement in her voice. I gave her plus one confidence. 
That's great. You finally made back the shit you cost to her. No, I could have tried to steal Cal if I really wanted her. No, no, no. Remember, remember that you picked uh, you picked something else, and then you made you caused Tammy's confidence to decrease. Okay. That's something you finally get back to the way you're supposed to be. Auntie Cedar chuckles. Cakes and cookies were fruit and frosting for a hundred people. Why you have quite an imagination, Tammy. She takes a ladle and spoons up some stew. We need to focus on large, hearty dishes that can easily feed many people. Like this stew, she says. If things get busy, we can serve the soy rations as is, but it's much nicer to actually cook for them with something else. She beams, full tummies make for happy workers. Auntie Sedent sets you and Tammy up with a few basic kitchen tasks and leave you to it. If you need help, I'll be just around the corner, she says, or you can ask congruence for advice. She has every recipe and method you could ever need and is an excellent teacher. Okay, plus one organizing. You quickly have your hands full with the sheer volume of food it takes to feed a hundred people. So there's only a hundred people? Hmm. <laughs> you never deal with a real cafeteria. Well, no, like, I understand that this is a starting colony and experts yeah, say that it's like between 50 and 500 people to start a colony without the worry of inbreeding. Mm. So that's what... 50 to 100 people? Yeah, depending on, depending on different factors. Yeah. So as long as they carefully keep monitor of who gets together with who and whose child is related to who... You can probably stave off. Uh, you can probably stave off inbreeding for like a good couple of years. Like worse, what was it like? Uh, I know Matt Pat made a video about it. That you could probably get like a good 50, 75 years before inbreeding, depending on the the, the initial population sure, but, size. But I would say, well, not pretty sure that civilization is ready. But I would say like. How would, I, how would I explain it? It would be like more, more like, but you know, seven, <laughs> seventy-five years later should be enough time that they have wouldn't be saying that they perfectly settled, but they still got their routine going on. Know what things starting to actually explore a bit more, knowing the basic. Knowing but the, you still have that starting population. Everyone's the center of that starter population. No, that's what I'm talking about. You, I, I didn't say that they're perfectly there. I'm say, I would say like they got. The good starting routine completed by 75 years later. If they do, and then you still have to wait roughly 10 years for another colony, another group to come to that colony. But even then, there's not a guaranteed shot that the next group will come in safely. So, like, yes, there is a good wait, chance. Speaking of that, since this is a new colony on a random ass planet, mm -hmm. are they contacting back home? No. So far, we haven't seen anything about them contacting back on Earth. Interesting. So, probably them going through that wormhole that it probably could take years for them to send or receive any transmissions from Earth. Unless unless they had, like, high technology to the point that they had enough to, like, uh, uh, I would say This occupy. is Earth, and we are idiots. Do you I know, really I mean, we're think talking about extra colonists here. That means in Earth they are Earthlings. They are idiots, and we are. No, 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 no. If they, okay, we're talking about extra colonists here. That means in their version of Earth, they actually have brains to be having the capacity to enter a wormhole with no problems and enter a place with no well, well not no problem, but uh, enough to survive at least to make an attempt. Are you that sure? That means that means it, just imagine. Well, I mean, this is this is just them. But I was talking about if there was a if they had the technology, like how you see in an anime or whatever, how they're able to like control wormholes or stabilize them, like to do whatever. Like mm -hmm. how you saw them in anime. I'm like, if they were at that level, maybe they could be communicating. communicating but we but we never went to anything related to the government stuff, though. We never we never went anywhere near government related things. The only thing that was government related was more working with Mars and stuff like that to get an attempt to start accessing that sort of stuff. Because here's the thing, we are still a child and we don't know what exactly is going on with the adults. And how we find out things historically speaking, around. even in anime, the idiots are the ones that are in charge. So like Sindonia freaking immortal people that's staying in incubators talking to people and trying to try to make shit fuck shit to get hit
relate wet. We have a an item for Mars. Crystal cluster for you. Get narcissistic F. Who? Who else? <laughs> Mars. Dad, I don't want to help with the animals. The animals, okay. Uh, we need 40 or greater. Darn it. And organizing 40 or greater to, to tell her what we learned. <laughs> there, she. Those two are the only adults that we can even talk to. Oh. Okay. All right. The funniest thing in the world is that the parents are not expecting anything from us, but the kids are expecting everything from us. The irony. <laughs> you know what? Let's do engineering because we did life science and humanities. Do you feel proud? Hmm? Do you feel good? Maybe. I'm done. You learn about wireless communication and how big towers in the colony connect your holopalms to the holonet and each other. They also help you talk to surveyors, but can easily be blocked by mountains. The stratospheric left two satellites in orbit around the planet, but due to the wormhole interference, they don't always work either. Interesting. It has been a long month of being cooped indoors while it poured rain and everything got too muddy and gross to play outside. You and the other teens are in the lounge again and everyone's getting a little antsy. Tangent and Cal are bickering about something and Dice must be bored enough that he's finally letting Mars paint his fingernails. Tammy's trying to teach Anemone a dance she learned from watching Holovids, and Anemone is, fall is failing miserably. The sound of their music fills the room. You're starting to feel a little off too, but like, it's weird. What, like you wait. want to, hmm? Huh? Wait, wh what? Is she, is she, is she, is she sniffing shit? <laughs> Like, you sound like a, like a person high or something. Like you want to yell, but at the same time you want to take off all your clothes and streak through the colony square. What? Oh, we got a picture. So now we can actually see Mars's braids. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and here comes Uticot. So those two are arguing. These two are trying to dance. Oh, it gave him black fingernail polish. At least she, she knows his Emo. favorite. Oh. And Lemonade dances a little too close to Mars's I collection. Thought, I thought she was painting Cal's hands. No, Cal and Tangent are yelling. Mm. Tammy's trying to teach Anemonade to dance. And Mars is actually painting Dice's hand. Mm-hmm. Is Dice becoming human? And Lemonade dances a little too close to Mars's collection of nail polish, bumping into the table and seeing them all and herself clattering to the floor. Hey, watch it! Dice snaps. Dance your stupid dance somewhere else. You watch it. Tammy snaps back. Ooh, her confidence Nemi, is working. Nemi is just trying to figure something out. Don't be rude. Right, Nemi? And Nemi sniffles from where she sprawled out on the floor, clearly trying not to cry. See? Tammy exclaims. You're making her cry, you big meanie. Boo-hoo, Are you Mars. sure it's not your gorilla strength? Boo-hoo, Mars teases. What are you going to do? Dance about it? Ugh, you're all so child childish. Who even cares? Everyone, just shut up! Cal yells from across the room. You, you all fight all the time. You stay inside where it's nice and dry and don't appreciate how hard everyone else works. It's just whine, whine, whine. Because you can't say bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> because there's a bunch of females here. They all come after their ass if that happens. There's literally only two boys here. Uh 
you are not better just because you work outside tang joins in you're not special cal if i wanted to i could work outside she opens her hollow palm and flies her fingers over the screen there see next month i'll be working in geoponics how do you like that then you can nag me about my soft hands all you want wait who said that tang <laughs> tang with cal he was nagging her about her soft hands they are going stir crazy for sure. Bro, hormones are flying. Utica pokes her head in from the command corridor. Children, keep it down. We can hear you all the way from the bridge. Everyone just goes quiet for a second and then explodes Ooh. into arguing again. Utica throws her hands in the air and retreats down the hallway. Yeah, Time to go wild. <laughs> should, we, should we click it? Yeah. Time to go wild. I forgot the rebellion is triplified. Somehow the rambunctious group tumbles into your quarters. Thankfully, your parents are out. Everyone keeps fighting. They're starting to get physical. Mars and Anemone get into a shoving match. Cal and Dice join in too. Tangent and Tammy yell from the sidelines, cheering when Mars knocks Anemone right on her butt. <laughs> Ouchie, Anemone whines, still sniffling. Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait a god dang second. You got you got bulwark armor on your body. Why are you saying ouchie? Because it still hurts. Like, if she gets cut, then the scales grow. Uh, right. I'm Makes sorry sense. for knocking over your stupid nail polish. Mars tosses her hair over her so shoulder. Apology accepted. You can pick them up while you're down there. She bounces, she flounces onto your bed. Ugh, I'm so bored. I can't believe I'm bored of bossing people around. Get off my bed. Where, who are you? Where am I? Wait, wait. Dice says we should play spin the bottle. <laughs> Dice has become yes. a man. Yes, yes. Spin the bottle. <laughs> okay. Everyone giggles nervously, but more courageous so voices. Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh, we about to get some pictures. <laughs> Your palms sweat as the ball spins on so your turn, spinning, 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 until it falls on. Who you think is going to fall on? Like Most likely it's going to either be Dice or Mars because we got the highest things with them. Dice. <laughs> Everyone who's a hollers, Dice, he looks completely unbothered. In fact, he looks excited. He unbuttons his collar. <laughs> I told you! I told you! He's an exhibitionist! I told you! I told you! He's a fucking exhibitionist! He unbutts his shirt collar and slicks his hair back, giving you exaggerated eyebrow wiggling, come hither and look. This is everyone in the X-Tax! You know what? We're, we're giving them a show. We're flirting with Dice. Yes. You wiggle over to Dice, matching his energy, and grab him and sweep him into a big. I'm standing! <laughs> Kiss. Everyone laughs at you as you kiss for five, ten, no, fifteen whole seconds before letting him go. Dice collapses back in his position on the floor with a silly smile. Oh, he become a man. <laughs> <laughs> he become a man. I look up into the distance with explosions behind me. I become a man with my flying cape. Just the, the flying cape was here. I become a man. <laughs> Everyone keeps playing, but the ball never lands on you again. Mars and Tangent get both get each other on their turns, making Tang go completely red as both times Mars plants a chivalrous kiss right on her lips. Next, stretch the hell out, really? Yep. Next day you feel all terrible. It's like your arms and legs are made of lead and it takes so much energy to do anything. You barely make it out of bed. All of the energy from yesterday has been drained out of you and then some, and it lasts for a week. Some of you can't even get out of bed. When, and when you do, your moods are all over the place. Aggressive, sulky, impulsive until your batteries run out and you sleep for over 12 hours straight. You're resting in the lounge with your friends, watching holovids and grazing on roasted pixie beans when your dad and chief engineer, Instance, come storming through. You! Instance snaps, smacking the bowl of pixie beans out of Mars's hands. Stop <laughs> eating those this instant. Oh. It's the pixie beans? 
It looks like she's target? about to smack some sense into instance, but your dad steps in. I'm sorry, everyone. We were wrong about the pixie beans. They're oh, not they... safe for kids to be eating. I knew it. They, it's like it's probably like a uh, so wait a, a sugar rush. You either know, a sugar rush or they were getting horny. I don't know. They're seeing high hormonal sugar rushes. You've been feeding us poison, Mar shrieks. Oh, ew, 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 ew! Do my dads know you tried to kill me? Somebody smacks some, some sense into her. Your dad spreads his hands. No, no, they're not. Don't worry, Mars. Calm down. They're not poisonous. It's just a chemical in them that hyperbonds to estrogen and testosterone. Your big teenage growing hormones and the brain is like binding to that new macromolecule with a lot more than the regular kind. It's been making your moves unpredictable and causing periods of hyper, of hypo and hypermania. When Marge just stares blankly at him, he laughs awkwardly. Translation, he says, it's been making you guys act silly and feel sick. I'm sorry. Instance frowns. If it's doing this to kids, it's not long before it builds up enough to affect the rest of us too. Till further notice, no one is to eat a single pixie bean. Aw, mice one calling me food and the hormone status ended. Aww. Oh, your dad looks distraught. Flulu is right, he says, collapsing in a nearby chair, rubbing his eyes. She didn't trust these things, but shit, she's going to be pissed when we don't have another successful food source. You look at him in shock. You hardly ever see him swear. You must, it must be worse than you think. Your dad sits there in silence for a long time. Aww. Guess what season it is? Wait, what? Glow. Time for another fiasco. Yep. Mom, do you hate dad? It's not nah, same thing. Stay where I can see you. I know. Oh, here's some pretty, pretty crystals for a Mars. But Mars is not here. Hi, guys. It's time for your annual. Oh, I, I, Medication. I, I still can't stop laughing about this. See what that is. I become a man. <laughs> now I'll forever. You know what? That's the title of the video. I become a man. Alright. <laughs> also, should I just like draw a picture of dice with the cape and stuff? Yes. <laughs> I become a man. Alright. Uh... Shit, dice never do. But, oh, that's probably another reason why he let Mars interact with him doing painting and nails. Because, you know, Dice would never interact with anybody. Yeah. I'm going to see if a, what a medicinal root make okay. anemone happy. Because we tried the mushroom log. She won't do mushroom. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I highly doubt, but sure. Eh, no. Uh, tangent's not here. Flulu. Uh, what Did shall we do? Did you talk to Mom? Yeah, she doesn't. There's nothing she wants to say. Uh, so we can do one thing. Should we go babysitting or should we go learn? Hmm. What is our uh, uh, thing that is low? Combat. Um, like literally, look at that. I mean, yes, yeah, so then it is at a four. Our combat is at a four. Everything else is like. At twenties or like close to twenty. Okay, I guess we do. But the thing is, we majority of the time we don't fight. But, but there then will again, be. It should, it should be useful in yeah. the future. So let let's go with the garrison group defense training. Yeah, combat and animals. You take your first session of security chief Red self defense classes. It's a small class, mostly security officers, officers and other adults. You and enemy are the only kids. She gives you a wink and a cheesy thumbs up as you listen to Red rant about how everyone in the colony needs to learn self-defense. Yes? You could be walking along thinking you're safe within the walls and a flying animal could swoop out of the sky. Then what would you do? Scream my head off like a scared little bunny. Oh, Red chops sure. the air with his hand. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to chop that beast right in the throat. Hiya, Dude! You do not look like the type who would make the hi ya sound. What are you talking about? Of course she is. This is curly fries. That wasn't curly fries. Oh, 
It was the dude. I thought it was curly fries. It was not curly I fries. I thought it was curly fries. Curly fries was not saying that. It was rat. The whole description, the whole par- uh, sentence dialogue sounded like uh, curly fries. He points at the assembled class. But only if you learn what I'm about to teach you. The only way to learn is by doing. Who wants to volunteer for a demonstration? Me. Toss my little body. See if Chief Security doesn't scare you. Or so you pretend. Rhett is like the biggest adult you know, and he's so intense. Okay. I need Jackie Chan and you fighting. Hold on. You step forward and Rev nods foot and crouches down. Okay, he says, I'm a manticore, stalking you through the forest. What do you do? I saved Uncle Tonin. Yes. That's literally one of the that's one of the answers. Should I write should I say it? Yes. I save Uncle Tonin. The rest of the class cheers. They all heard of your heroic encounter with the manticore. A few of them send you some kudos. So I just made three bucks by saying that. Hey, bro. That's great. Chief Rat gives you a dark look. You got lucky, Solana. That beast could have easily killed you both. You weren't even armed. He shakes his head. Well, that's one thing we can fix when you're ready. Once you learn situational well, situational awareness, we'll move on to hand and hand, hand to hand self defense drawing on a variety of martial arts only when i'm confident that you're ready will advance to weapons i'm gonna shoot it like a crazy american okay hell yeah who doesn't like shooting objects that's perpetual issues forever plus two to last card which is gonna be good your value is a wild and my first words. And my first words. Ah, another year, another glow. Everyone's pretty sure there's going to be an attack this year, so the colony's on high alert. So why the hell are you two out? <laughs> You're collecting glow flies in the Geoponist Garden with Cal and Anemone when the sirens begin to wail. You all stop what you're doing and look at each other nervously. <laughs> Your parents run off to help defend the farms, telling you to get inside the greenhouses and stay quiet, Anemone declares. She's going to the walls to watch the soldiers fight. She knows a good, a good spot. Uh, should we go inside and stay quiet? Search from the walls or defend the gates like our crazy ass has done four year, three years in a row? Uh, obviously. Um, we got bravery 20 or greater, so we can do it. Oh. What if he has to do with combat? We have shit as combat. Oh well. I'm gonna shoot like fuck that. We're gonna get some chaos. Chaos! You scramble down from the walls and are immediately faced with a seething wall of hop eyes. You kind of thought there were there only a handful of these usually peaceful creatures from previous years, but there's swarms of them. Ooh, the hop eyes are mad. Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody made them mad. Uh, it's not like just those government things. Like, oh, I'm gonna like, yeah. Yeah. It's not just hop eyes. Once your eyes adjust to the chaos, you see large creatures that look like walking bushes. These wild centipede looking things with long spider legs and at least one giant mini eye thing that's hovering clear off the ground defying gravity. They all seem to be incited into a frenzy, attacking everything in sight and trying to get through the walls. It's dark and chaotic. Oh, oh come on! What? I told you, combat! Why did we make that our dump trait? <laughs> but here's the thing. We got two friendship with Anemone, and she's shouting encouragement from the wall, and he's telling us to back away. Fight. Fight bravely. I mean, yeah, we can. I just have a feeling he's next. Fight bravely. Okay, we'll fight bravely. Plus one bravery. Um... Marking up with the guts that you lack in sensor skill, you charge in without a plan or a real weapon. Oh, I am stressed. I am heroic, but I'm also injured. <laughs> You're immediately rammed to the side by what looks like a living pile of rocks, and you go down. You see sky and then dirt and then sky as you're tossed through the air. Before you sky and then dirt and then sky and again. Uh, hear Anemone scream the comp to help. I'm gonna- Oh! Oh, you're gonna be- Ooh, I need to run. What? Impossible! 
Oh, fuck. Damn, damn. Yeah. Fine. fine. Run away. You're gonna have to run. Comes right, this is no place for a kid. You take the chance to flee where Anemone is rushing to take you to Med Bay. You definitely need some time to recover. Man, parents, parents are gonna be like, uh huh. <laughs> I'm telling you, this wasn't a fluke, your mom says. They're not, they're not just wild animals. They have a plan. The fields, the lights. Okay, your dad replies, taking her hands across the tabletop. We have to tell people what we saw in geoponics. They look up, noticing you in the doorway. Your dad's worried expression quickly changes to a smile. <laughs> hey, Rutabaga. Hey, man, I that didn't you're limping in a little loopy from the med bed. Solana, what happened? Are you hurt? It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> so, I am a brave girl. Yes. Your mom frowns. Now it's not the time for joking, she snaps. Go to bed. It's late and... We have a lot of work to do in the morning tomorrow to clean so up. So every glow season, they're trying to beeline t towards the farm area. Yeah. What do you have in the farm area that's making them run towards it? Oh, look, we're a little taller. Oh my god! And our clothes are different. <gasps> Their pictures are different. Oh shit! She has longer hair. Oh shit! Look at curly fries. <gasps> she cut her hair. I told you she's gonna be bald. I I must see. What is this emo lord and emo edge lord? Oh, He's got the the movies. <laughs> oh my god! You catch dice on a ridge overlooking the wilderness, He's bobbing her. Yeah, bobbing his head along with something playing through his hear speaker. He doesn't know she walk up. He jumps when you tap him on the shoulder and scrambles to turn off his hollow poem. Don't sneak up on me like that. He grumbles and flops backwards on the grass, looking up at you. Man, I was just getting to the good part of the song. You know English? I mean, if you saw What are you song? listening to? It's just some old music from Earth. You probably wouldn't like it. Try me. He sends you a hand to link your hollow palm. He stares for a few seconds before pressing his palm to yours. Yeah, the music see. floods your brain through a hear speak. What is it? What kind of music is it? Uh, he takes his hand and weaves his fingers together, timid. I, I listen to a lot of Earth music. Do you like it? It's either I love this band or you listen to this. Come on, he's already having a hard time. Love the band. He cracks a smile relieved. Good. Aww. It's my favorite right now. I always listen to the same album on repeat. It's comfort music. I really like her voice. He stares into his lap. Sometimes I feel like the lyrics are about me, he admits. They're just so deep. And like my soul really get. <laughs> uh, I, I have to sound like a cringe lord. No, this is literally. I am fourteen, and this is deep because he is fourteen. Yeah. But you don't gotta sound like a cringe lord. But don't tell anyone, okay? It makes me feel better thinking someone knows my pain, even if it's a oh dead earth God. woman. Sounds deep, man. He nods what? and closes his eyes. Yeah, he replies. I have a lot of time to think. Not like everyone else here. Oh look. We got a little thing for dice. Uh, we need creativity 30. We can hold his hand. We can be flirty. Okay, let's go down. Let's go down. He's cringing. You reach out intensely and just link your pinky fingers with dice. Feeling him tense up beside you, he darts you a nervous glance and looks back up at the sky. When he sees you looking back at him, his cheeks go completely That's so red. precious, you dorky edgelord emo kid. He doesn't hold your hand, but he doesn't move to his away either. Okay. You dorky emo. All right, Cal, what you look like? <laughs> you know what? He looks. He looks like a Jamaican. Look at you know like the beads and stuff. Oh, like, oh the, the style of Rastafarian. Hair. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That's the word I'm looking for. God damn it, I keep. I said Jamaican. <laughs> oh, look who thinned out. Now she just look like a fucking diva queen even more. Here, have your crystal cluster. She looks cool as hell. Yes. Look at that bubble plastic. I told you plastic clothes. I like I like her new dress. I'll admit that. Okay, Tammy. Tubby, I said Tubby. I mean Tubby bars. Tammy, what you look like? She has a little bit of acne, but she's so cute. Why does she look like a wings fairy? Yeah, she does have that vibe. But, but don't she reminds me of Flora. But, yeah. But more tyrannical Amazonian style. Yeah, but don't you want to give her a hug? And, and she got plumper! Yeah. Oh, she's gonna be our Amazonian god queen. 
All right, let's see who else. Tang, how you be? Yeah. No, so female. She's just like a little more androgynous. Uh, and then let's look at a girl. Uh, and then they scratches her neck and scowls at a bit of blue scales flake off. Stupid acne. She mutters on she top of everything like I got dorky, this too. She looks like a, a little dorky country girl farm girl. I know, right? Oh, she looks adorable. Oh, why can't we look at Uncle Toad in? Why can't we? Oh, look at our wait. precious little curly fries. Wait, we got adults here still. Okay, there. They don't look any different. That's good. But we are now 14. We are having a heart core depression. And we'll stop it here because we kind of yeah. ran for an hour and a half. Okay. So save on existential crisis. Definitely the next one has to be Cal. Just, just, just go to attack Cal and see how his reactions are. You want to flirt with Cal now? No, no, no. I'm talking about the if, if we ever do a second playthrough. Oh, yeah. I see what Cal reactions. We already saw the first reaction, how he is. When we did the fir the first flirtation thing, that was absolutely hilarious. He just tensed up because we sniffed his shirt, which is again absolutely hilarious. All right. Our child, our precious child, is had turned cringe when she did sniffing. But yeah, so like, let's see, last count. Yeah, because we're still six. Oh, there's seven. Seven spots of people that we haven't met yet. Okay. I want to see what Nougat is going to be. She's seven now. So, Anemone is 13. Cal is 15. We got 39 friendship with Cal. 21 friendship with Anemone. 23 with Tangent. 60 days. with Dice. Oh, what about Mars? 46. Wow, we were, we're really going ham on, on dice. 39 with Tammy. Okay, so yeah. Next time, we'll we'll continue on. We're like halfway through the game, because they said... About 20? Yeah. Okay. So I'll go ahead and end this video.